Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the fundamentals of the muscular system. We will help you understand the different types of muscles we have throughout the body, the structural makeup of skeletal muscle, and the various roles a muscle can perform depending on the demands of the activity. Let's get started. The muscular system is a series of muscles throughout the body that contract and relax in order to produce movement and provide support, just like a complex pulley system. We have three different types of muscles. Smooth muscles, which are located in the walls of hollow organs, such as the digestive tract, and contract involuntary. Cardiac muscles, which are located in the walls of the heart, and are once again contracted involuntarily. And skeletal muscle, which are located all over the body and attached to bones and other connective tissues. It is these muscles that we can contract voluntarily. The structure of skeletal muscle can appear complex at first, but trust me, it is worth learning. The epimysium is the connective tissue that surrounds the muscle belly. Fascials are bundles of muscle cells segregated from the rest of the muscle by a connective tissue sheath. The perimysium is the connective tissue that surrounds the fascial. The endomysium is the connective tissue that surrounds the muscle fibres. Muscle fibres are elongated cells made up of numerous myofibrils. Myofibrils are cylinder-like structures that extend along the complete length of each muscle cell. And the sarcolemma which is the cell membrane of a skeletal muscle fibre cell. Still with me? Well, we're not quite done just yet. We need to explore a little deeper. The sarcomere is the functional unit of the muscle and is made up of different types of protein filaments, actin, myosin, and titan. These filaments form a number of repeating sections within a myofibril. It is here where the main action happens during the sliding filament theory, a process that produces a muscular contraction. But we decided that, that deserves its own video. You can click on the link below after this video and take a look. Connective tissues allow muscles to interact with the rest of the body. Muscles attach to bones via tendons to provide an anchor for muscles to produce force. Fascia are large areas of dense, thin, fibrous tissue that surround a muscle or organ, a bit like a giant spider's web. Muscles can produce three different types of contractions. Concentric contractions occur when the muscles shorten under force. Eccentric contractions occur when the muscle lengthens. And isometric contractions, which are static contractions without any movement and produce force without any change in joint angle. Not all muscles are made up in the same way. We have three different types of muscle fibre. This is genetically determined, but between 10 and 20% of our fibres can be adapted through training. Let's take a look at these three different fibre types. Type 1, or slow twitch, type 2A or fast oxidative, and type 2B or fast twitch. When it comes to defining the characteristics of these fibres, it is useful to remember that type 1 and type 2B will always be at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Type 1 fibres are slow and do not produce much power, but their high resistance to fatigue and aerobic capacity makes them perfect for endurance activities such as the marathon. Type 2A are the perfect middle ground between slow and fast. This is what makes them great for middle distance activities that require elements of both endurance and power such as the 800 meters or 1500 meters. Type 2B fibers are all about power. They are quick to fatigue, but produce quick and powerful movements. They are perfect for any power-based activities, such as the 100 meters sprint. 
During any human movement, different muscles will take on different roles. If we take a look at a barbell incline press, for example, the pectoralis major is the agonist, which means it is the prime mover of the action. The anterior deltoid and triceps are the synergists, which means they don't do as much work as the prime mover, but they're still very important and help out. The rotator cuff is an example of a stabiliser. This means that it works hard to stabilise the body whilst the prime mover and the synergists do the work. And finally, the posterior deltoid is the antagonist, which means this opposes the prime mover. When any muscle contracts, an opposing muscle lengthens. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.